All right, let's go. Another live, another live. We are live. All right. Welcome everyone, and by everyone I mean no one yet. Um, we should get some folks coming on here in just a moment. But until that time, I'm just gonna hang out. And for those of you that are going to watch this later, uh, I just wanna say thank you for watching it. Uh, that means a lot to me. And we have our first guest on the live. Welcome guest number one. You are lucky number one. So congrats. Congrats. <laughs> You're my first live guest. And thank you for liking the live. I appreciate it. Um, so tonight I'm going to talk about uh, Mr. Beast. And uh, what's up, White Flower? And yes, we are going to be talking about Mr. Beast. And uh, why I love Mr. Beast. So we're just going to kind of go through that. Hello, shopper girl. How are you? Thank you for joining the live tonight. Um, so if you could, please let me know your name, where you're from, and uh, any interesting fact that you want to let me know in the comment section. So we got 11 people on here right now. So please let me know name, where you're from, and an interesting fact about yourself, if you want. And um, are you already subscribed to my channel or are you new here? Wonderful from Kentucky. I'm the lady with 30 plus years of marriage wishing you the same. Thank you so much. I am going on year number seven of marriage. So got a long ways to go to catch up to you. So I really, really appreciate those kind words and uh, the well wishes because I need it. So thank you. Um, yeah, who else we got on here? You're a sub from Pennsylvania. Okay, thank you so much. Do you mind sharing your actual name? And if you don't wanna share your actual name, that's okay. But I uh, would love to hear your actual name. Um, I'm divorced two times and it's okay. <laughs> it is okay. It is okay. Um, no judgment here whatsoever. Um, everybody is welcome on this live. And I encourage all of you to, to come and hang out. So, um, Thank you for joining all of you who are here. So yeah, I wanted to talk about Mr. Beast. Um, obviously, this guy has just skyrocketed to fame over the last several years. Um, pretty much everyone knows him at this point in the YouTube uh, in the YouTube community. Um, he is, I think, the second largest YouTuber in the world. Um, I was divorced once, learned what I really wanted and got it. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad you got what you wanted and got what you needed. Um, so yeah, obviously everybody knows Mr. Beast, um, uh, AKA Jimmy Donaldson um, from North Carolina. Um, fun fact, I am like, um, your Native American name is White Flower. Very cool, that is so cool. Um, fun fact, I am about six and a half hours away from Jimmy, where he lives. Um, Greenville, North Carolina, I believe, is his location, where his big old warehouse is, where he lives. But um, I've been doing a ton of research on Jimmy, aka Mr. Beast, over the last year or so i've really been like diving into his story and like watching little documentaries on his story and like his rise to fame and like what kind of you know got him rolling i watched a lot of his early videos when he would like rate other youtubers and in their intros and when he was playing video games like call of duty and all that um so i've watched like a lot of his old stuff um and he has always loved YouTube. And I, I love that um, he was super thankful for every 
follower that he received or a subscriber that he received. And he would like talk about that openly on YouTube. And I thought that that was really, really cool how he would like just openly talk about um, the amount of subscribers that were subscribing to him and how thankful he was for the subscribers and then how happy he was when he started making some money off of YouTube and monetizing and stuff like that. So I thought that was like really, really cool um, that he had humility, um, you know, in when he was small. And I still think that um, there is some humility in Mr. Beast. I mean, it's it's probably hard to stay super mega humble with as big as he is. Um, but I think that all things considered, he's handled the spotlight really, really well. And I think that he's trying to use his money for good. And, um, you know, I think he's trying to make the world a better place. That's his, that's his goal. And I think he's uplifted and inspired and definitely entertained a lot of people, um, over the last several years. I know he's entertained me and he's inspired me. Um, he's inspired me to want to do this full time. Like I, even before I knew about Mr. Beast, I really, really wanted to um, do content full time. And then seeing Mr. Beast's story and where he came from and where he's at now, it's just like super inspiring. Um, this just goes to show that if you're committed and you persevere and you stay consistent and you work really, really, really hard, that you can be successful. Um, there's no like specific formula to success. However, there are common factors, and one of those common factors is consistency. And forgive my lisp, but I have uh, Invisalign in. I'm trying to get my teeth straight, you know. I'm trying to get my teeth straight. But anyways, there's four of you on, on this uh, lovely live right now. And I just want to ask you, uh, four people that are here, like, ask me some questions. I'd, I'd love to answer some of your questions or kind of like talk about anything you want to talk about. Um, hi, Candy Trent. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining the live. Um, please, please, please ask me questions. I would love to answer some of your questions or uh, talk about a subject that you want to talk about. Um, we don't have to talk about Mr. Beast the whole time, but I did want to talk about some of the things that I loved about him and things that... Um, I want to incorporate into my videos that he does well and oh, excuse me and into my style um so yeah that's why I wanted to and honestly if you make a thumbnail with Mr. Beast on it it's going to get clicks it's going to get views so I figure why the heck not why the heck not use Mr. Beast's face on my uh on my YouTube live thumbnail so Anyways, um, so you three people that are on here, this is my fake mic right here. Um, how are you doing? How's everything going in your life? Please tell me. I would love to know. Um, the more interactive you are, the more we can have a back and forth conversation and the more easily this live flows. So uh, would love to get some feedback of how, you know, you're doing, how you're feeling, uh, if you have some questions for me, or you're like, who the heck are you? I don't know you, like I've never seen you before in my life. This is the first time I've stumbled upon your page. Um, this is the first time I've been in your live. Um, I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, feel free to hit me up in the comments and I will answer anything that you ask within reason um, and within the community guidelines of YouTube, because I want to stay on YouTube. So I want to stay on YouTube's good side. So, um, we keep it clean in here. It's going great. I got rid of TikTok after my car accident in November. You guys are posting more on YouTube. I've noticed that's great. Yes. Tell us about yourself. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yes, we are not posting as much on TikTok. Because I think that TikTok is going to get banned. That's what I think. And I also think that YouTube is the ultimate place to um, achieve the full-time uh, full content creator um, 
ability is is on YouTube, and that's like the ultimate place to become a full time uh, content creator. And that's where ultimately I think you can make the most money is YouTube, um, followed by Instagram, probably in that order, and Facebook. After that, you can make some money on TikTok, but I don't think TikTok is going to be around for much longer. So yeah, YouTube is the creme de la creme. But anyways, back to my story a little bit. Um, oh, how did you meet your wife? That's an easy one. We'll, we'll talk about that. So I met my wife. Her name is Haley. So a lot of people confuse and think that her name is Kelly because we're called the Kelly fam. And a lot of people call her Kelly thinking that her name is Kelly. But my name is Ty. Her name is Haley. And our last name is Kelly. So um, how I met my wife. I'm going to get back to that. I met my wife in high school. I met her my senior year of high school. And I saw a picture of my wife on Facebook. She was in the picture with my cousin Jamie. And I saw this picture and I was like, oh my gosh, um, this girl is gorgeous. And I immediately wrote my cousin. I was like, how come you've never introduced me to this really, really pretty blonde girl that seems to be playing on your softball team at your high school? She's like, oh, that's Haley. She's the other pitcher on our team. She's a junior. Um, she's really good. She's really pretty. And I was like, yeah, she's really, really pretty. You need to introduce me to her. So instead of like waiting for the introduction, I took it upon myself to, hi, Willow. Good to see you again. I took it upon myself to reach out to Haley on Facebook. So before sliding in the DMs was a thing, I slid into my now wife's DMs, except it was on Facebook and there was no messenger. So it was just like a regular Facebook message when Facebook was a long time ago. This was before, this was before Instagram, folks. So no Instagram. I don't believe there was Snapchat at this time. I didn't, there was no Snapchat. There was no Instagram. There was no TikTok. Uh, and so I Facebook messaged my wife. And uh, I said something along the lines of, I can't believe my cousin never introduced me to you or something like that, something really corny. And we uh, started up a conversation and that led to me finding out that she was playing my high school at my high school in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, the following week. So it was like just meant to be. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go support my cousin. So I went to go support my cousin and I just so happened to get to, get to meet Haley after the softball game. So I met her. We hit it off. We started texting. Next thing you know, it's like three weeks later, three or four weeks later, and we're really hitting it off. And like, I really, really am liking her. And uh, she has a prom coming up. And mind you, I've never been to prom myself. I like bailed on prom last minute. I was like into sports. I didn't care about prom. I didn't care about homecoming dances and all that kind of stuff. I was like really into my sports and uh, didn't really care about that kind of stuff. And mind you, I liked this girl so much that when she said she didn't have a prom date, I was like, uh, well, I'll be your prom date. And so I drove all the way to Gainesville, Florida, which is about two hours away. So not really far away, but, um, drove to Gainesville, Florida to be a part of her junior prom. And it was the first prom I ever attended. Um, and I asked her out on the last slow dance song, which was a Lady Annabellum song, slow dance song. And I asked her to be my girlfriend on the last song of the prom night. And we kissed and uh, on the last song and then she like slept on my shoulder the whole way home. And it was really, really cool. So we started dating and we dated the rest of my high school and summer and into my freshman year of college. She was still in high school back in Florida. I went to college in North Carolina on a baseball scholarship. And so that was hard. And uh, we ended up breaking up my freshman year of college. 
Um, I broke up with her and um, I'll get into that story at some other time, but essentially I am a Christian and um, and as a Christian, there are certain beliefs that I was trying to uphold and certain, um, you know, like things that I was trying to do in my, uh, in my walk and I was not living the way that I should have been living. And, um, my wife and I, and, uh, Haley and I, we got a little too physical in our relationship. And that was something that I was trying not to do until marriage. And because of me feeling very guilty in that situation, I broke up with her and, um, I, I gave her some lame excuse, like I was, you know, wanting to focus on baseball or whatever. But truth of the matter is, I was not, I was not ready to be in a serious relationship at that time. I just wasn't. I was very immature, and um, and honestly, like my wife um, or girlfriend at the time, uh, she wasn't ready either. I mean, she was still very young. I was only nineteen years old, and. She was uh, 17. So, um, you know, she was young. I was young. We were both young and immature. So we broke up. We broke up for three years. We broke up for three years. And um, I remember I ended up transferring to a school in Florida to play baseball, the University of North Florida. It's like, uh, it's a division one school, but it's not as like big as the University of Florida or like Florida State or anything like that. But it's like a mid-level division one school in baseball. And I had injured my shoulder. I had to get shoulder surgery. And that was the second time that I had to get shoulder surgery. So I was really, really bummed out because I thought that I was going to play professional baseball. And I kept getting hurt. And that was really like setting me back. But, you know, I still had a chance to play division one baseball um, in my home state. And so I moved back to Florida. At this time, she had gotten a softball scholarship up in Georgia, up in Augusta, Georgia. But um, so I like probably two and a half years into uh, us being separated. Um, you know, she had gotten a boyfriend and they had been dating for a little while. And I was like, ah, they'll break up, you know, like they'll, they'll break up. But the next thing you know, they had been been dating for like a year. And I was like, what in the heck? Like, she's still dating this guy. And then I got, like, really depressed because I was like, man, there's no, like, good girls in the world anymore. And I blew my chances with the one good girl that's, like, a really sweet girl. And she loves Jesus. And, you know, like, she's really, really just, like, living for the Lord. And she is just, like, an athletic and pretty and pretty on the inside. And, man, I, like, really, really messed up. Um, and so I was, I remember this clear as day. I was like at baseball practice with a friend of mine and I was talking to him about Haley and I was like, man, I, I missed out on this opportunity. Like she is the one and I missed out. Like she's with another guy and he's like, well, are they engaged? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, then why don't you tell her how you feel? And I was like, I don't know how how I feel about that. You know, like she's dating another guy. I don't want to be like the home wrecker. I don't want to like, you know, be that guy kind of thing. And he's like, well, you should, you owe it to yourself to like tell her how you feel at least, you know, get some closure because, you know, he's just like, go for it. Like tell her how you feel. And I was like, okay. So I reach out to Haley and I'm like, hey, uh, I know you're dating a guy and I hope that you're doing well. And I know we haven't talked in a long time, but I just wanted to say that if something ever goes awry uh, with your current relationship with the boy that you are currently dating, I would love the opportunity to take you on a date if you two break up or if like it just doesn't work out with you two, I'd love uh, another opportunity to to take you out on a date. And basically, that was my way of telling her, like, hey, I'd love another shot with you if things don't work out with uh, your boyfriend. And um, I didn't know this at the time, but, uh, you know, she was having a really tough time with this guy. Like, he was not a good, 
like not a nice guy to her and was like not treating her right. But I didn't know these things, you know. She made it out to believe that they were like great and perfect and all things were good. So she wrote me back. She's like, out of respect for my boyfriend, like, please do not message me again. Like, do not reach out to me. Like, don't talk to me. We're moving towards, uh, you know, like, you know, looking at, you know, potentially getting engaged. And that's like what we're, you know, looking forward to and all this kind of stuff. And I was devastated. I mean, I was devastated. And, um, yeah, I mean, I... I was so, so devastated. And so for like the next six months, I just like went to parties and tried to talk to as many girls as possible. Like I was, I was like, I was depressed. I really was. And I was like, she's going to marry this guy. The, the, the girl that I truly love is gone forever. And I was like really, really upset. And um, so I was just like coping with it by like talking to every single girl I possibly could and going to parties and just playing baseball and, Baseball wasn't really going the way that I thought it would either because I kept getting hurt, you know, and I was just in a rough point in my life, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all the above. And then like six months later, out of the blue, it was, it was during the summer. I was sitting at Sonny's and for you, for those of you who don't know what Sonny's is, it's a barbecue joint in Northeast Florida. I was sitting in there and I had this summer job with um, my old a high school coach and it was uh, it was a landscaping company so I was like doing landscaping this was like manual labor I was really tired but we were at lunch we were eating some sunnies drinking some sweet tea eating some barbecue and I get a text from Haley out of the blue and I'm like what in the world why am I getting a text from Haley and she sends me this long message saying I know I, I feel like a hypocrite right now for reaching out to you, but I just got some really, really, really bad news. And you were like, you and your family were like the first people that I thought of when I got this bad news. I'm like really, really scared. I don't know what to do. And I could really, really use some prayer right now. Could, could just like really use some prayer right now. And um, come to find out, she had found out that she had the same genetic um, she had the same genetic mutation that her mother, her grandmother, and her great-grandmother had. It's called a BRCA1 mutation. And for those of you who don't know what a BRCA1 mutation is, it is a genetic mutation that causes you to have an 85% chance of breast cancer in your lifetime, a 65% chance of ovarian cancer in your lifetime, and you have a higher chance for uh, like liver cancer, um, it's just a terrible, terrible, terrible mutation. Um, Haley's mother had stage four ovarian cancer, um, but she miraculously survived. Haley's grandmother passed away from ovarian cancer, and Haley's great grandmother passed away from breast cancer. So that just gives you a little context there into, you know, Haley's background. And then when she gets hit with this information that she has that same gene and like literally the three generations above her all got cancer and like died from it or like almost died from it. That's a tough pill to swallow when you're 20 years old. You know, that is not what you want to hear when you're 20. So she reached out to me and, and I didn't, I felt so bad for her. I literally went outside immediately and called her. Like the second I got the text and read it, I went outside. I was like, I got to call this girl coach. I'm so sorry, but I, I got to go out here and I got to make this call. So I call her and I check on her and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so, so sorry that, you know, you just got that news and I'm here for you. And, you know, she still had the boyfriend. So I was like, look, I want, um, I, I was like, look, I, I want to respect your boyfriend. Um, however, uh, my grandmother is a prayer warrior and she would love to pray for you. So would you be interested in coming to my house and I will drive you out to my grandparents' house and I will let my grandmother pray over you and just talk to you and, you know, just, just pray over you and your life and just to give you peace about this whole situation and what you just, this, this bad news that you've heard 
And I didn't think she'd say yes, but she said yes. So for the first time in three years, I saw Haley again. And it was just wild, like seeing her again. She, for one, she had colored her hair. So the first time that I saw her, she was a brunette instead of a blonde. So that kind of threw me off, but she's still beautiful. And, um, you know, we got in the car and we started driving and it's just like, it's so surreal. Like, um, it, it, it's so surreal that she is, um, you know, sitting next to me, haven't seen her in three years and she's just riding beside me. And I'm just like, holy cow, I can't believe this is happening. Um, I don't like the circumstances in which I'm having to see her for, but I am so thankful that I'm getting to see her, even if it is in this manner. So I drive her out. I sit her in the room with my grandma and I just get out of there and I let them do their thing. I do not interrupt. I let them do their thing. And then once they were done, I drive her back home and it was just so good to see her. It was so good to see her. And um, because it was so good to see her, I didn't want that feeling to go away. I wanted to see her again, but she has the dang boyfriend still. And I'm just like, what the heck? Now they've been dating for a year and a half, you know? And um, he just got drafted as a baseball player, like professionally. And so he was going to go like play minor league ball. And I'm like, she's got this hot shot, you know, uh, pitcher that just got drafted. And here I am. I keep getting injured. So I'm not going to play professional baseball. So I'm like, you know, like, Oh, what the heck, you know? And, um, so I'm like kind of hardcore, like jealous. And so anyways, it's like close to 4th of July time and she's in town still. And I'm like, Hey, it's really good to see you. Um, look, I know you still have, uh, what's up, Billy, Billy. I know you still have, um, a boyfriend, but I would love to just as friends, invite you over to hang out with my family again for the 4th of July. Uh, we're going to be on the river uh, watching the fireworks. My sister's like house sitting this house on the river um, in downtown Jacksonville. And it's going to be a great spot to watch the fireworks. A lot of my family's going to be there. You're welcome to come hang out or play board games and just hang out. It's going to be a great time. And she said yes. She said yes, people. I did not think that she would say yes. However, come to find out later on, her mother convinced her to go. She was going to say no, and then her mother convinced her to go, which, yay, mom. Now my mother-in-law, but at the time, yay, mom. So, um, we, uh, we, uh, she says yes, and she comes and uh, hangs out with me, and like, we have a fantastic time. Like, I don't try to hold her hand. I don't try to like kiss her or anything like that. Like, I'm not trying to play home wrecker, but we have a fantastic time. And it's just like, we just clicked, like nothing had ever, nothing had ever transpired. Like the three years had basically nothing, you know, it was just like, we got along. We just, we just meshed. It was, it was really cool. And she just, she just like fit right back into our family. And it just like, it just made sense, you know? And so I, I remember I like walk her out to the parking garage and I give her a hug and I was like, it's really, really good to see you, um, you know, and, and we just kind of left it at that. And um, she, she told me later on, she like called her mom right when she got in the car and she's like, she's like, I'm in trouble. Like we have a problem because basically she told her mom, like she still is in love with me, even though she'd been dating this other guy for a year and a half, like she's still clearly in love with me. And so then she kind of like the next couple of days, like self admitted, like admitted that she still had feelings for me. Like she didn't tell me that she loved me, of course, but she told me that she had feelings for me. And I was like, Oh shoot. Why? Well, clearly still have feelings for you. Like we, it was like nothing had ever, it's like we had never been gone from each other. Um, and, uh, sorry, I just dropped my little thing. I've been talking into my little mic, my fake mic. It's not really a mic, but I like talking into it. Um, and so she like within three weeks of us hanging out that second time, she, uh, cut it off with her boyfriend. She broke up with him. And then within a month after that, 
we were dating. And the rest is history. The rest is history. We dated for about two years before we got married. Like we dated our last two years of college. And um, we got married right after college and had three babies. And here we are. Here we are. Going on seven years of marriage. I've known her since 2011, and it's 2023 now, so it's kind of crazy. So that was a very, 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 very long story of how I met my wife. Sorry for me being long-winded, but um, you just got the the whole story, so I hope you enjoyed it, because <laughs> that was a really long-winded story. Sorry for being so long-winded there, but um, yeah. There's a lot of context to that story that I feel like is pertinent to the overall story. So I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, I enjoy it. I I reminisce, it, I reminisce about it from time to time. I've told the story many times and it never gets old. It never, never gets old. I came in late and really enjoyed it. Um, Willow Skinner, thank you so much. I hope you have a great night as well. And Meadow, thank you for... Really, really liking it. I, I really appreciate that. I'm glad that you liked it. Um, I like telling that story. So anyways, that was how I met my wife. Um, I will uh, try not to be as long-winded on the next question. If y'all have any other questions, I'd love to answer those questions. We have 12 people on here. So apparently that story at least had some of y'all interested because when I started that story, we had like three people on here. So, hey, we got some extra people on here. So thank you so much for joining. Um, by the way, I just want to set a goal here for this for this live. So uh, last time I went live, we had a max number of people of 14. So right now we have 11. My goal is, can we beat 14 people on this live? Like it would really, really mean a lot to me if we could get to like 20 people. That's my goal for this live. Can we get to 20 people? We're at nine now, so we just dropped off two more. So I'm, 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 uh, I'm clearly going in the wrong direction. Uh, Billy Billy, thank you so much for um, the compliment. And thank you for telling me that you think it's a beautiful story. Wow, we are going even further down now. Now we're at seven. So um, we're supposed to be going up, y'all, not down. Um, so yeah hold my hold my bear or hold my beer big difference big difference there i agree with you i agree with you to get 20 people yes can we get 20 people can we get 20 people on here i don't know can you like share this live with your friends or invite other people i've got some friends who would like your channel see there you go there you go like share share this live like okay so here's the thing y'all i'm just gonna straight up ask shameless plug um she has to be good to you. Yeah, she has to be good to me. Um, share this live with your friends. Share my videos with your friends. Share our channel with your friends. Like if you have Snapchat, like share our, like link our uh, YouTube channel to your Snapchat. Um, link our YouTube channel to your Instagram. Uh, share our YouTube channel to your Facebook or uh, your TikTok or whatever it is that you do. Or if you can share it somehow on YouTube. I don't, I don't know how all the sharing goes, but the more that you share and the more that you engage with our stuff, the more that tells YouTube, um, I'll share the live in your channel. Thank you so much, Willow. Seriously, thank you so much. That means more than you know. If you like this live and you share this live and you tell other people about it and you bring people here, that does so much for this channel. It does so much for us because... That tells YouTube, hey, we like this person or we like this channel. So let's push this channel out to more people because people are going to like this because these people are liking this. They're sharing it. They're staying on. They're staying engaged. They're staying involved. So um, do you have any life-changing moments you can, you can share? Well, I have all kinds of life-changing moments, I'd say. Um, the number one life-changing moment is when I asked Jesus into my heart. Um, I am a Christian, so that is a life-changing thing for me. I, I don't want to be, uh, I want to be unashamed about that. I'm very unashamed of my faith. I'm not going to try to shove it in your face. However, um, 
being that I have a platform, I do want to tell y'all that I am a Christian. And so that was a life-changing time in my life. Uh, meeting my wife and getting married to my wife um, was a life-changing event. Um, having all three of my children were life-changing events. Um, uh, I've had several major injuries. Um, I've had two shoulder surgeries, a knee surgery. Actually, I have a video tomorrow that's coming out that goes into a small little uh, Jose Mariano 589. Hello. Um, anyways, uh, I, I'm sharing a long form video. It's coming out 4 p.m. Eastern time um, tomorrow. So be sure to tune into that. It's like a little vlog. It, um, it goes, it, it, it dabbles a little bit. It dips. I, we dip our toes into a little bit of my, um, condition that I had. And they found out when I was 12 children are miracles. I tell my son Easton that every day. Yes, they are. They sure are. Um, and thank you for loving my videos, by the way, Billy, Billy. Um, so yeah, I'm sharing that a little bit of that story. Um, how I, um, was told at 12 years old that I would never play sports ever again at 12 years old. I was told that and a miracle happened about a year and a half later. I was back to playing sports again. So it took me almost two years when it was all said and done to like get back on a field or a court or, you know, uh, playing any kind of sport, but I got back and, um, Came back and, and got hurt again in ninth grade and then got hurt again um, right before my senior year of high school and then got hurt again uh, my sophomore year of college. So I just kept getting hurt like over and over and over again. I was I was a really, really good baseball player. Um, I was a really good baseball player. And I honest to God believe that I really could have played um, at a professional level. And, um, and uh I just, it wasn't in the cards for me. It wasn't God's plan for my life to, to play professional baseball. But now I um, I play, you know, slow pitch softball. I haven't played in a long time because of my kids. But um, I play some flag football. And um, I'm going to get into pickleball. So y'all be on the watch for me. I'm going to start documenting my pickleball journey. I'm going to try to get better at pickleball. I'm basically going to go from like zero pickleball experience to trying to compete in tournaments. So I'm going to share that, um, that kind of, uh, progression. I'm also going to share, um, I like to do Spartan races, um, like those outdoors, um, uh, obstacle course races, um, so pickleball is like basically if ping pong and tennis had a baby, that would be pickleball. So it's like a smaller tennis court, but it's bigger than a ping pong uh, table. And you have like a smaller paddle and a different kind of ball. And there's like some rules around like being close to the net. It's called the kitchen on both sides. And if you're in the kitchen, you have to let the ball bounce. But if you're outside the kitchen, you can hit it in the air. There's like all these different rules, but it's a really fun uh, game that is sweeping the country by storm and everybody and their mother is getting into pickleball. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna maybe get into pickleball too. I am uh, might do that. Um, everyone give a thumbs up for the live feed. Yes, please give me a thumbs up. If everybody can give me a, we got nine people on here. So can we get nine thumbs up from all people that are on here that would really really mean a lot and i and by a thumbs up i mean liking this live i really appreciate it and if you can share that'd be great can you share your children's birth stories yeah so all three of my children um, were born in jacksonville um we had to take clomid for cash and for canon so our first two boys we had to take Clomid. Um, so mind you, back to the story of my wife having the BRCA1 mutation and and all of that health issues and concerns. Like Because of that, to um, be a preventative measure, she had to take birth control from the time she was like 16 years old all the way until we got married. Well, then the doctor was like, hey, if you want kids, 
you got to have kids in your 20s because you're going to have to get preventative surgeries by the time you're 30 and preferably before you're 30. Like you need to have kids like right away. And because of that, um, because of that, we started trying to have kids right away, but then we found out that Haley wasn't even ovulating. Um, uh, she wasn't even ovulating. And uh, she had um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, so PCOS. You women probably are familiar with PCOS, so she had uh, basically cysts all over her ovaries and it wasn't allowing her to um, ovulate or anything like that. So there was like no shot of getting her pregnant. And so she had to take progesterone to kind of like try to clear out those uh, cysts all over her ovaries. And then we had to take Clomid in order for her to actually uh, ovulate. And um, so literally the first month that she took Clomid, I got her pregnant um, with, uh, with cash. So we have cash and then uh, past 11 and I'm an old lady, so 99, love the feed. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a fantastic night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really, really appreciate your time uh, being on here. So anyways, uh, second baby, Cannon, um, same thing. Haley could not get pregnant uh, naturally. So we had to take Clomid and on the first month of her taking Clomid for the second time, I got her pregnant. So I was two for two on uh, the first time that she ovulated, I got her pregnant. So uh, uh, score on that one. Uh, so two for two, um, my boys can swim. Uh, I was cool. So I was really, I was really proud of that, you know, being the man that I am. Uh, I get all happy over dumb things. Um, but anyways, so, um, got pregnant and then had baby Cannon. And then we, right after having Cannon moved to Dallas, Texas, um, for my job. And while we were in Dallas, um, we started consulting a doctor about Haley getting a, um, double mastectomy. So for those of you who don't know what a double mastectomy is, it's when you take away all of the breast tissue in order to prevent breast cancer. So, um, we uh, we started consulting the doctor and they suggested that she go ahead and get the double, double mastectomy. However, five days before getting the double mastectomy, we found out that I had actually gotten her pregnant naturally. So uh, I don't know if after having baby number two, something reset in her body and she was able to like naturally um, ovulate. But um, I remember her being like really nauseous and we were driving to Six Flags in Texas and she was like complaining about my driving and how I was making her nauseous in the car. And I was like, I'm driving the same way that I always drive and you don't ever like complain about being this nauseous when I drive. Something's off. And I remember she like woke me up cause she was working as a nurse in Texas and uh, God did reset her, he really did. And, um, she wakes me up at like five in the morning and I'm like straight up thinking I'm dreaming. And she's like, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, what? And she's like, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, are you sure? She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pregnant. And, uh, I literally like, I'm like in a, in a daze. And I literally like go back to sleep. I literally like go back to sleep and I wake up and I'm like, was I dreaming or did she actually tell me that she was pregnant this morning? Cause I was like half asleep still. And so I call her and I'm like, did you tell me that you were pregnant this morning? <laughs> and she was like, uh, yeah, you weren't dreaming that that was real. I'm pregnant. And she was freaking out because you know, that was five days before her big surgery. So Obviously, we had to call the doctor and uh, tell her that my wife was pregnant and that we had to cancel the surgery. So we canceled the surgery 
And on top of that, we end up moving back to Florida and literally um, four days, four days after moving back to Florida, mind you, we don't have a house yet. Our house is still under construction. We move back to Florida and we have the baby four days after getting back to Florida. And then we have to live in a friend's upstairs for like a couple months. And then we move to another temporary house for a month. And then we move to another temporary house for another month. And then finally, after paying for short-term rentals for several months, we, uh, we uh, got in to our house. And uh, then my wife went on to get a double mastectomy and total hysterectomy at the same time. And then she had uh, two uh, revision surgeries following that. And then she got appendicitis and had to get an appendectomy. And all of that happened within a year. And with three kids under four, it was just the wild, wild west in our house. I mean, my gosh, it was, we were worn out. We were worn out and I was, uh, I was beside myself. Like I, it was a tough time. I mean, she was in a bad way from her surgeries. Like she was having a really hard time recovering. And I was just stressed out of my mind. Like her mom had moved into our house. So I had her mom living with us who wasn't really helping significantly. I mean, she would help with a little bit, but she was not like helping, helping. And uh, then we had the three kids um, that are super young and can't do anything for themselves. And then my wife, she can't do anything because she's recovering. And so that was a trying time in our life. That was a trying time. Um, it, was, it was a hard time for me too. Uh, mentally and emotionally and spiritually, that was like one of the hardest times in my entire life, by far. Probably the hardest time in my life. And I wasn't even the one that got the surgery. So I, I really feel for, for Haley you know, she had the physical trial. I had the more emotional and spirit, or I would say the more emotional, stressful, uh, like taking care of the kids in the house and my job and her trial, which basically being a caretaker for that many people and still having to work. And I mean, it was hard. It was really, 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 really tough time. I'm glad that's behind us. I'm glad that time is behind us because whew, don't wish that on anybody. I do not. I do not wish that surgery and those things on anybody. I wouldn't wish that on my arch enemy. Um, thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So anyways, I've been here for 48 minutes. I appreciate the ones that have that have hung out with me this whole entire time you guys rock you guys are awesome and the salt of the earth i really appreciate you um so if you hung out this whole time thank you it mean the world to me if you shared this live um hold up um I'm sorry, I'm looking at your comments here and y'all all brought comments at like the same time. For your channel, do you use an advisor? I'm new to creating content on YouTube and I'm wondering how many of the successful channels like yours hire a YouTube consultant. So I'll say this, I, um, I blew up on uh, TikTok first. So we have over a million followers on TikTok. We have close to 100,000 followers on Instagram and on YouTube, we're now at, uh, we're at like 17,000 subscribers on YouTube. So we're starting to grow that because I'm actually like focusing on it now. And I'll say this, um, I never got an advisor. Um, however, I have done a ton of research. Like I've watched countless videos and strategies and you know, done research on my own and through trial and error have come to find what works and what doesn't work. 
um, for us. And it's a, it's a constant, um, thank you. Thank you, Billy. Um, it's a constant, like you constantly have to adapt, but you're in, you're constantly learning. But I will say this, I did recently hire, uh, basically a producer, essentially like someone to help me with content ideation. Um, and he's helping me, uh, he's helping me get really, really, uh, organized with our content and like building out a strategy for 2023. So that has been very helpful. Um, I also have hired, I've also hired a video editor because I am tired of editing my own videos. And I've also hired a thumbnail editor. So I have a thumbnail editor, a video editor, and a content like producer slash like uh, advisor, if you may. Um, all centered around uh, what I'm trying to do on YouTube in uh, 2023. So I'm like laser focused and I'm like upfront putting in a lot of money to this because this is costing me a lot of money to pay these people to edit my videos and advise me and help me get organized and help me with thumbnails. But it's that important to me that I want to scale this and go full time. And in order for me to do that, I got to put out great content and quality content and I got to be consistent and all those things. So I am putting in the time and effort and the money to try to really, really do this thing right. So I, I just... I would encourage you at first, like, try to do as much as you can, really uh, stay consistent, um, find a niche, stick to your niche, and um, don't get down, because when I first started posting stuff on YouTube, I was getting, like, less than 100 views, and um, it wasn't until about a month ago that I hit my first million views on a video. So now I'm starting to get a few videos that have surpassed a million views on shorts, but I still haven't gotten like anything close to that on long form content. So now like my next goal is to like hit big thresholds on, um, on long form content as well. So hopefully that helped you a little bit. I know that maybe not, they didn't maybe answer you completely, but, um, I watch your new videos you make. Thank you. That means a lot. Um, so yeah, I have a new video coming out tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, be sure to check it out. Be sure to check it out. Um, I don't think you'll regret it. I think you'll like it. Um, it's like five minutes long. So watch it all the way through because that really helps when you watch the video all the way through that tells YouTube that, hey, this person really, really liked this video. So if you watch it all the way through and you like it and you comment on it and you share it, that's like the ultimate uh, help for me and our channel. So if you do that, um, that really, really helps us. And um, yeah, be on the lookout. Like next week, we're going to post quite a few videos. So we got stuff coming your way. I got a big... I got to go to bed, but I got a big uh, Disney challenge style video coming up within the next two weeks. So y'all are going to really, really, really like that one, I think. Um, so stay tuned for that. So anyways, I am signing out. Love you guys. Have a fantastic night and we will talk soon. Peace out. Well...